All right. We haven't done anything. We haven't started. Here we go. Example one. And this you already have experience with. It says, use five rectangles of equal width to find an approximation area of the region line between the graph of f of x equals negative x squared plus 5 and the x-axis between 0 and 2. All right, that doesn't sound too hard. But then it says, let's draw a picture and use RAM. Let's see if we can come up with a formula using sigma notation. So that's the part that might be tough, maybe. So let's do the stuff that we know already. We know how this function looks like, right? That's just a parabola with a vertex on the y-axis at 5. So here I am. I'm going to exaggerate it. So here it is, exaggerated. And here's the vertex. That's at 5. And if it's going to cross the x-axis, it's going to cross at square root of 5. And we know that because if we equal that to 0 and we solve for x, you get square root of 5. Are we okay so far? Now notice, they don't want us to find the area from 0 to square root of 5. They want us to find the area from 0 to 2. So 2 is actually somewhere like right, I'm going to say 2 is like right there. Chop, how do you know it's to the left of square root of 5? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so I know square root of 5 is to the right. Are we still okay? All right, now I want five rectangles, so I'm going to find my delta x. Here's how you find your delta x. Delta x equals, I want five rectangles between 2 and 0, so 2 minus 0 divided by 5. So each delta, each rectangle is going to have a delta x of 2 fifths. Are we still okay? All right, so I'm going to try my best to draw a rectangle of delta x of 2 fifths. I'm going to say that's 2 fifths. And I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to say that's 4 fifths. You guys see how I got that 4 fifths? I'm just adding 2 fifths. And I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to say that is 6 fifths. And I'm going to go 8 fifths. And then bam, that 2 is the same thing as... 10 over 5. Are we still okay? Now it says to do RAM, so I'm going to choose a different color, like blue. And I'm between 0 and 2 fifths, I'm going to put a point. Don't worry, I'm going to go slow. Bless you. Bless you. Salud. Salud. Bless you squared. Here's my first rectangle. Here's my second rectangle. Sorry, miss, I'll stop. Here's my third rectangle. <laughs> I'm trying to stop, I really am. I'm not trying to do it on purpose. Yeah, go ahead. Is there any left? That's it. That's it for the rectangles. One, two, three, four, five. If it bothers you that there's still part of the curve here, then you can just erase or pretend that part of the curve is not there because you're just finding area between 0 and 2. Cool? All right. So you're going to need a calculator. Does everyone have a calculator? Yeah, don't, don't, lose, your cal don't lose that calculator, Abdul Kareem. Say it again. Yeah. Right. So here we go. Let's create a pattern, guys. Because remember, we did sigma notation recently when we did a pattern? So let's find a pattern. And we'll keep it simple. All right, guys. Focus, focus. So I want, I'm going to do, let's see, what am I going to do? I'm going to do height times width of each rectangle. So the height is determined by RAM, right? So I know that I'm going to do f of 2 fifth times 2 fifth. This is your height of the rectangle, and that is your width. That's the height and width of the first rectangle. Wait, what? do you mean? The height is dictated by the y value, right? f of 2 fifth is your y value. Oh, no, no, no. There's an F in front of it. Okay. Okay. No, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that, guys. Blame it on lack of sleep. Uh, do I sound real sassy today? I apologize. It's my hair. It's because of that. Okay. All right. The next one. F of 4 fifths times 2 fifths plus 
f of 6 fifths times 2 fifths plus f of 8 fifths times 2 fifths. And I'm going to put plus, oh man, I should have had more room. F of, instead of f of 2, I'm going to put f of 10 fifths. So hopefully no one gets confused by that. Not yet. Don't do that yet. Because of this part right here. I want to use a sigma notation. Oh. For the answer, you can't. But I want to. Okay. So remember from last week when we studied how to use sigmas? I count one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do a series of n equals five, right? So we're going to say this. We're going to write sigma. And I can start at whatever letter I, I can. We can use any letter we want, but we're going to use traditional letters. So I'm going to say I equals one. And I have how many rectangles? So I'm going to put five. So I know that I'm adding. I see an F on each one. F of something. And I know that every single term is being multiplied by what? So times two fifths. So I know for a fact it's going to look something like that. Now, here's what we need to figure out. I need to figure out what to put in here. Then when I equals 1, I get a 2 fifth. When I equals 2, I get a 4 fifth. When I equals 3, I get a 6 fifth. When I equals 4, I get an 8 fifth. And when I equals 5, I get a 10 fifth. Do you see the pattern? But but I'm not going to use I'm not going to use x. Look at the letter. So I'm going to use 2i over 5. Perfect. There it is. You, okay. Oh, that's a common letter. They use usually letter I, J, and K, but that's a good question. I means the ith rectangle in this case. The first rectangle, the second rectangle, the third rectangle, the fourth rectangle, the fifth rectangle. Cool or not cool? Um, ask, ask. Oh, the, that was the delta X if I wanted five rectangles, right? All right, here we go, guys. So this is what I wanted, and now all I'm going to do is get the answer for that. So... I'm going to take my calculator, I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to type negative x squared uh, plus 5. And if I want to, without, without the sigma notation yet, well, I guess we can try it. Uh, where, where, what do you want to try, the sigma notation? Math number, where are we? Where's the sigma? There it is. <laughs> Excuse me. Number 0. At, we're going to type x here because that's the easiest one to do x from 1 to 5, and we'll verify that it's the same. 1 to 5 of y1, and then open parenthesis. You're not going to put, what are we going to put? Uh, math, math 0. 2x over 5. 2x over 5. You know what? Let's use a fraction feature. I didn't use i, I just use x. Oh, math. Math 5. Math 0. And all that times 2 fifths, right? And if I push Z, if I push enter, that should be my answer. We'll figure it out if it's correct right now in a little bit. 6.48. Don't worry, I'll go back. Okay, hey, hold on, guys. When we're, hold on, let me answer her question real quick. When we're talking about what? The delta x. Every every term has a. This is always oh because in a little bit we're going to relate this to the integral symbol, and I want you to notice that you always have height times width. So in order for my integral symbol to be correct, it always has to be. It always has to end with a dx. Okay, the number of rectangles, the rectangle, first rectangle, second rectangle, third rectangle, fourth rectangle, and remember that it also has to match, when I plug in a one, it has to give me a two-fifth. When I plug in a two, it better give me a four-fifth. Does that make sense, Gonzalez? All right, Lopez, what's up, Gonzalez? Lopez? Okay, let's check to see that this is true, guys. Don't just count, like, let's see if this is true. Ready? Here, here we go. Alpha trace y1 of 
what x value am I going to put in here? 2 fifths, perfect. And then I want to do what Abdul Kareem says. I'm just going to add them all up and then multiply that by 2 fifths, right? So y1 of 2 fifths plus alpha trace y1 of 4 fifths plus alpha trace. Does that, do you guys know what I'm doing right now? Okay. No? I'm getting, I'm doing width times height, width times height, width times height. So what am I doing? You see this first rectangle? I'm going to label it. One, two, three, four, five. That first rectangle, that height is dictated by the x value. I plug in that x value. Where do I plug it in? Into here. So that is negative parentheses 2 fifths squared plus 5. Whatever that y value is, that's my height. And how do I get an area of a rectangle? Width times height. So I'm doing height times the width. This is 2 fifths. And then I get the next one. And I go, what's that? 4 fifths? So you go, go negative in the front. 4 fifths squared plus 5. Whatever that y value is. Um, I, I take that y value because that's the height. And I multiply it by 2 fifths again. See? So that's what I'm doing, guys. Does that make sense? Okay. And it better be the same. Y1. Was it the same for you guys? All right. 6 fifths. Plus, I'm sorry guys, we'll, we'll pick it up right now. Y1, 8 fifths, plus Y1, and you can put 2 if you don't want to put 10 fifths. Enter. That times what? 2 fifths. And there it is, we got the same answer, guys. Cool, right? We got the same answer, guys. Did we understand this? Marcello, we got this down? For sure? Okay. We got this down? Yeah, with rectangles. Okay. The, usually, RAM is the easiest to do a sigma notation. That's why delta only has doing this, what we just did with RAM. But it doesn't mean that it can, that it, it doesn't mean that it must be RAM. It could be done with LRAM as well. You guys ready? We're going to go slow. Do the same figure or the same expression, but we're going to do it with LRAM instead. So here it is again. I'm going to say that's 2 right here. And again, the delta x is going to be the same because I'm still doing 5 rectangles. 2 minus 0 divided by 5, so 2 fifths. So... Again, it's the same thing again, 2 fifths, 4 fifths, 6 fifths, 8 fifths, and then 10. But this time, I'm not doing RAM, I'm doing what? LRAM. So here's my first one. Oh, that was not. I'm trying not to do a decimal there. So I said RM and I did RM there. Sorry guys, my picture sucks. I still have my five rectangles, but notice they've all been quote unquote shifted. So let's do the pattern first before we do the sigma notation so we can figure it out. Ready? f of 0 times 2 fifths. All I'm doing is width times height, guys. Or height times width. f of 2 fifths times 2 fifths. f of 4 fifths times 2 fifths. f of 6 fifths times 2 fifths. And I'll start writing it slower. And my last one, f of 8 fifths times 2 fifths. Traditionally, we like to say the i's rectangle or the k's rectangle. So we usually want to start at i equals 1. If they want to be mean, though, they can start it at 0 as well. Then it would make this maybe a little easier. But we're going to start at k equals 1 or i equals 1. Cool? All right, here we go for five rectangles. Sigma notation. I have five rectangles, so I start at 1, and I'm doing a 5. 
and I know for a fact it's f of something times every single one of them has a two-fifths. This time, I want the first one, when i equals 1, to be 0, when i equals 2, to be 2 fifths, when i equals 3, to be 4 fifths, when i equals 4, to be 6 fifths, when i equals 5, to be 8 fifths. How do I do it? I'm still going up by 2. Not to, I mean, we're not to, uh, you're still adding two fifths as i increases by one, so you still have that two fifths scale. But this time, since we want the first one to be a zero, what are we going to do with the i then? Okay, yes, but usually you want to have the i separate. So two fifths, you usually want to have it like that. So what did I put in there? You had it right. Just factor out of two fifths. Yeah. Well, the other way. I. Okay. There it is. So that's there it is. So two fifths, and then put I minus one. Close. Close. Why? Okay. If I plug in a one in there, do you agree that one minus one is zero? Yes. And zero times anything is zero. When I go to two. 2 minus 1 is, and 1 times 2 fifths, 1. Oh, yeah, 2 fifths. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 times 2 fifths, 4 fifths. Do you guys see that? So there it is. You got to find, yes. Does that make sense? Okay. So here we go. Oh, what happened, Abdul Kareem? Ask. Are you sure? I told you to sleep. Did you sleep? Okay. So I'm going to type in math number zero. So you guys can get comfortable with this. X equals one to fifth to five. It's the same equation. Uh, alpha trace Y1 and then parenthesis. And I'm going to put in there uh, alpha Y equals. So I get the fraction in there to fifth. And I'm going to move a little to the right and then open a parenthesis x minus 1, close, and that should close that, and then close it again. That closes that times 2 fifths. If I did everything correctly, which I think I did, uh, let me see, what is that? That's closing the sigma, okay. 8.08. Are you shocked that it's a little above, that it's a little higher than the other one? It's an overestimate. Good. All right. So far, how do we feel? All right. Here's going to be the next question I'm going to ask. This is a big one. How do I get the exact area for both of these, LRAM or RRAM? No, no, no. Well, before, because I we cheated and I told you about that word. How do I get the exact area? Don't say integration, because I know that's the, that's the exact area. How do I get the exact area with this method that we're doing? I have to make the number of rectangles approach what? Infinity. Infinity. Both of them, and also MRAM, we talk about MRAM as well. All three, LRAM, MRAM, RRAM, heck, even the trapezoid ones, if we do trapezoids, all four of them, if we let the number of rectangles or trapezoids approach infinity, all four will converge to the same number. Do we make that clear, guys? Okay, so this is what they're trying to say in the next picture. So go to the next one. Notice that, you remember, Gonzalez, how you said the I, where's the I? Look while they say the case rectangle. So I'm going to circle that. The common letters they use is I, J, and K. So they, your professor might say the ice rectangle, the J's rectangle, the case rectangle. Sometimes they put a star on it. Uh, it all depends. Uh, we have area below. We have area above. All they're doing, guys, is doing width times height of each rectangle and adding them up. So see what this is right here? All they're doing is finding the height. That's your height. 
and this is your width. And they're adding them up, all all those rectangles. Cool or not cool? Okay. So when you see this expression, look what this is. This right here is the exact area where the f of ck. That's for the c the case rectangles. That's how you get your your x value, the c of k, right? That is your height, and this is your width. They don't have to, okay, I know they say n approaches infinity. They could have also said, they don't have to say n approaches infinity. They could have also said as delta x approaches zero. Why could they have also said as delta x approaches zero? Can you guys tell me? It's the distance between, the delta x is approaching zero if I have an infinite number of rectangles, right? Yeah, the more rectangles I have, okay, guys, make sure that you stick this in your head. The more rectangles I have, the smaller the delta x becomes. So do, when you become, when you go to the university and you open up a calculus book or a chemistry book and you say sigma notation as delta x approaches zero, Mr. Chavez never taught us this. He, it was all lies. It's the same, guys. You're going to come to me. You're going to text me. Look, you never taught me this. And I'm going to text you. I'm going to text you an awkward emoji. And I'm going to be like, n approaches infinity is the same as delta x approaches zero. Awkward emoji. Uh, so there it is. So don't say that I didn't teach it to you. Delta x approaches zero is the same as n approaches infinity. Cool or not cool? All right, ask. That delta x becomes smaller. Well, if, if, if I have an infinite number of rectangles, delta x is zero. Yeah, the more rectangles you put, the smaller the delta x. And by the way, and here is the magic formula. This is why I, we cheated. Yes, I know, and I'm sorry. In future classes, hopefully we won't cheat. Is there a way, is there a way to make this a lot simpler? Yes. This, this elongated S is like a sum. This is where you start. This is where you stop. This DX is like a delta X. And this means that you have an infinite amount, infinite, Amount, I said, capitalize the M, of rectangles. All integral symbols must end with a dx, because that dx is like your change in x. Does that make sense? Which is approaching zero. It's an infinitesimal. That's why. That's why it's calculus, right? No, dx is like uh, dx is like delta x. All this, everything on the left equals the right. And the, you know how I told you that this means exact area? Well, this means exact area from A to B, right? Okay, and that's it. Uh, then I give you that. That was also on yesterday's notes. Here's where we need the A game. Are you guys ready? All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to go slow. We're going to start with an easy one first, and then you guys are going to lead me through this, hopefully. Don't worry. We're, yeah, well, this is our first time, so it's all good. And I'm going to give you, I don't, okay, I don't want, I don't want you to become formulaic, formulaic. I will give you formulas, but I want you to know where all those formulas come from. Okay? All right. On the interval negative one to three, is partitioned into n subintervals of equal length, delta x equals 4 over n. So that's what my delta x is determined by how many rectangles I have. Let m of k denote the midpoint of the k subinterval. So that just means some x value. That's all it means. So I'll put that in there for notes. Express the limit as n approaches infinity from k equals 1 to n of 3mk to the power squared minus 2mk plus 5 times 4 over n as an integral. Okay, so obviously here's what they're telling me. They're telling me this means exact area. They want me to come up with this, with the integrand. So let's, yeah, let's see. Let, no, no, it's all good. So we know for sure what our limits are. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, she figured out that this is just some X value, and we're do all we're doing is high times width, high times width, high times width. So this is just some X value. M plus K is just some X value because we that's what we said right here. So this is just three X squared. Don't worry, we're gonna get it's, it's gonna get tougher. Minus two X plus five, and then this four over N is just your DX. It says right here, delta x is four over n. Oh, oh, oh. By the way, the, by, I don't, I'm not, I'm trying not to give you too many definitions because I don't want you to become a robot. Delta x is b minus a over n, where b minus a is just your interval divided by n number of rectangles. Are we okay so far? Okay, now let's jump it up a notch. Let's make it harder. You guys ready? It says write a limit using using summations that would equal that right there. Okay, the first thing I would do, here's what I would do. This is just me, everyone is different. I would figure out what delta x is. Because I know that I'm gonna have a delta x at the very end, right? With times height. So I would go delta x, I know is b minus a divided by n. I know that I start at four and I end at so I'm going to go delta x is equal to 7 minus 4 over n. So what's that? Okay, that's my delta x. That's what's going to go in the end of my summation. You can actually put it in the front as well, but I like to put it in the back. Are we all okay so far? All right. Then I'm going to write summation. Oh, yeah, yeah. i got to write limit first. You can put, you don't have to erase it. If you have room in the right limit, and I'm approaching, n is approaching what? Infinity. And then write the sigma, which is this, uh, the summation. And I'm going to start, you can use any letter you want. Uh, what letter do you want to use? Well, for, try to use i, j, or k. You want to use i, k? Okay, k is fine. k equals 1 all the way to n. So there it is. Start with that. Okay, now before we fill it in, open up parentheses. Before we fill it in, I need to know where I'm going to start for my first, so I'm going to write x of k. Where I'm going to start, because you wrote k, or you can write i or whatever. Are we okay so far? I'm sorry, what? Oh, because I want the exact area. So I want uh, infinity rectangles. So that's why I'm approaching infinity. This is where I start, this is where I stop. Have I lost anyone so far, guys? Okay. I need to figure out what's going to be my first x value. Because remember, this is my height. I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses here. Here's my height. Here's how my height is dictated. So I know it's going to be 4 over something plus 4. I need to know what this something is. It's not going to be an x. It says x there. I need to figure out what my first x value. I'm going to use RAM. So your first x value, and I'm, I'm trying really hard not to give you formulas, but let's think about this. Your first, R, your first x value is going to be wherever you start. So your a the lower limit, plus, let's see, plus what? Your delta x, right? Your delta x. So I'm going to write delta x like this. But we'll, don't worry, we're going to figure it out. And then it's based off of how many rectangles you're deep in. So, how, like, if I have a second rectangle, it's going to be delta x times 2. If you have a third rectangle, and I know some of you are looking at me like, uh, what? Yeah, uh, not n. What letter did you use? Okay. K. Does that make sense? Don't worry. Don't worry. Look, I'm going to come over here because I, I know you guys are visual. Look, here's what I'm trying to say. So don't worry. Just listen right here. Just listen. Don't You don't have to write anything down. If I'm trying to figure out this rectangle right here, the second one, I know that I am two rectangles away. That's my, that's my second rectangle, right? So look, that was two-fifths. Two-fifths times two gave me that four-fifths. And then that's how I know that that's my x value. 0 plus 4 fifths. 3, three. three is 6 fifths. Now, be careful. We started at 0 here. What if I would have started at n equals 1? Then it would have been 1 plus whatever that is. A is your starting. Yeah, A is like my 0 on this one. Does that make sense? For cello? Seniors? Okay. S. The number of rectangles you're in. The rectangles you're in. So, here it is. Man, you guys are doing really good, actually, I think. So here we go. Yeah, x of k equals 4 plus my kth rectangle. You're going to leave it alone as k. 
times your delta x, which we already said was what? 3, Three over n. Let's simplify this to write it like this. Write it like this, guys. That's my start. That's where I started. 4. 4 plus 3. Yes. 4 plus 3k over n. Are we okay, guys? All right. Yes. That's my delta x. How many delta x's? How many delta x's you you've passed? Like for the fourth rectangle, the fifth rectangle, the sixth rectangle. The three over n is your delta x. Yes. That all of that is just your x. So in the denominator, you're going to write four plus three k over n times, and then finally, the last thing I got to do is times what? Uh, 3n, like that. Now, be careful. This is my habit. I, I've seen it because I have an international exam. This is my habit. Sometimes they're tricky, and they put this 3 over n in the very front. Don't get tricked. That is just your delta x. It's just, they just decided to put uh, width times height instead of height times width. Cool or not cool? And hopefully this makes sense to you. So let's stop real quick. So let's see if this makes sense. If I tell you that I have five rectangles, well then look, three over five is your delta x. And then look, where's your first, where's your first x coordinate? Four times three over five. That's your first x coordinate. And then the second x coordinate would be your two delta x's away. So three times, uh, uh, two times, yeah. Do you, you guys see it or no? Okay. Or maybe I'm the one that's going too fast. Okay. You want me to you want me to write it out? <laughs> let's just do it real simple. That's it. That's my answer. So if I had, let's just do it simple, guys. Look. So this, just so you can see, what if I told you that I have two rectangles? What? That's it. We're done. Yeah. So then it would be this, guys. Look. I'm just doing it in blue. You don't have to write this down. Just listen. Look at this, guys. Sigma k equals one to two of 4 over 4 plus, uh, what did I say, uh, n was? 3k over 2 plus 4 times 3 over 2. And there it is. Look how beautiful this is, guys. The first rectangle is going to be at 4 over, here's my height, 4 plus 3 over 2 plus 4 uh, times 3 over 2 plus my second rectangle, 4 over 4 plus 3 times 2, 6. 6 over 2, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to simplify it, uh, plus 4 times 3 over 2. Perfect. This, this, because remember, your height is dictated by your x value. So, this is all r ram, by the way. That is my x value that we're at. That is my x value that we're at. Because you're, you, uh, what, what? 4 plus 6 over 2. Okay, cool. I Yeah, 6 over 2. Do we kind of understand what's going on? Oh, I just made that up. That's not even the question that it's asking. That's what I said, miss. I just said, yeah, I just said, what if, just to verify that it works. You don't have to write anything in blue. Don't, as a matter of fact, don't. Because I'm not the, what the question is asking. All right, look at this. Hopefully, that's going to get simpler. Hopefully. You guys ready? All right, from one to six, first thing I would do is find my. Delta x, 6 minus 1 divided by, I don't know how many rectangles I'm going to use, so I use what letter? N, because for N rectangles. So 5 over N. So here we go. Then I'm going to write limit as the number of rectangles approaches infinity, sigma notation. And you guys like the letter K, so we'll go with K equals 1 all the way to N. And I'm going to write a giant parenthesis. I'm going to close it. Notice that this has a square on it. So I've got to put a square on it because that's my height of each of each rectangle times my delta n, delta x, sorry, which is 5 over n. All right, I need to figure out what I'm going to put in there. Remember, I'm looking for my x value. I'm doing rm for all of them. So on the side, I'm going to write my x of k is equal to, yeah, 1 plus, I'm, using, I'm doing rm, so my case rectangle times 5 over n. So my x of k is 1 plus 5k over n. 
And that's what I'm going to write in there. Bless you. Bless you squared. 1 plus 5K over N. Maybe I should have started with that one instead because that one's a simpler one. So you know what? Let me go ahead and rewrite these notes. Not for for next year. Uh, swap. Okay, I'm going to swap those for next year. Does that make sense? All right, I, I know that some of you are visual, so let me write. I'm going to exaggerate. So, okay, here you go, Gonzalez. Do not write this down. I'm exaggerating these. Uh, this is, I'm just going to make it up. Let's say n equals 2. This is x squared, right? So everyone just listen. You don't have to write anything down. Do you see that parabola? Here's 1, and I'm going to say here's 6. Don't write this down. Just listen, guys. I'm only using two rectangles, right? So if I'm only using two rectangles, this is 5 divided by 2. So I'm just going to I'm just going to say there's there's my R RAM. Here's here it is. Bam, bam. Each width, each delta x is I said it was 2. So 5 over 2. So this value there is that value right there is 1 plus 5 over 2. Right? Because I have to start at 1. See how I have to start that's my 1, the delta x between this black and this black, that is 5 over 2. Because my delta x is 5 over 2, right? So how do I know what x value that is? 1 plus 5 halves, whatever that is. You know, which if you want to turn that into 2, 2 7 over 2. Mm -hmm. And then look, look, how, look, look how beautiful this is. 1 plus, if I plug in, remember, n equals 2, right? So 5 times 1, so 1 plus 5 over 2 squared times 5 over 2 plus 1 plus uh, 10 over 2 squared times 5 over 2. Oh, look, that 10 just came from I am, that's another 5 halves right there. And I'm referencing that 1 from here. 1 plus 10 over 2 will give me 6. Obviously, that is 6 right there. Right? See, if you turn that 1 into 2 over 2, the whole thing is 6. 1 to 2 over 2, 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Do you see that? No? Okay, so width times height, right? So this is, what's my, what's my height? Seven halves, yeah, go ahead, times five halves. Yes. What's the area of this rectangle? Uh, let's see. Um, six squared, squared, by the way times five halves yeah the height isn't this isn't this x value six and then look this is six one is two over two two plus ten is twelve twelve divided by two is six six squared yeah there it is it works no i know that's why the teachers don't <laughs> Oh uh, no, miss. We're we're gonna continue. We're just we're just adding. Okay, okay. Let's go to the next one, guys. Here we go. We're gonna go a little faster. Yes. Yes. The one was the starting point. No, you always start at your whatever the a is. If it's zero, it's zero. If it's five, it's five. All right. Here we go. Delta x. Minus 1 divided by n. Okay. All right. Maybe it's, it's better if we just go right into the x of k before writing the expression. x of k. I'm going to start where? 1 plus, you always write the k because we don't know what rectangle we're in, times your delta x, which is 1 over n. So let's simplify this. It's going to look like this. 1 plus k over n. So here we go. Limit. As n approaches infinity, sigma notation, square root, and you're going to write your x of k because it's just x, 1 plus k over n, put all that in parentheses like that, times, all that times what? 1 over n. Oh, I, yes, I do need that. K equals 1 to N. I do need that because then where do I start? Yes, I need that. How do we feel? Did that Was that better, Gonzalez? 
Okay, so let's just do that then. Let's just go right into it. So I'm going to do two things. Find my delta x and my x of k before I do anything. All right, here we go. Next one. Find your delta x. What is it? 2n yeah. over n. Now I'm going to do my x of k. Where am I starting? 4 plus k, always k times your delta x, which is? So this is going to turn to 4 plus. Perfect. Now here we go. Limit as n approaches infinity. Sigma start at k equals 1 all the way to n, yeah, why did I put infinity there? n, and then I'm going to write ln, open parenthesis of, close it, oh, put that in giant parentheses, all that times 2 over n. Uh-oh, this one counts backwards. It's fine, count backwards. Delta x, 5, yeah, 5 minus 7 over n. So negative 2 over n. Your x of k. You can say plus a negative if you want. So we're going to start at where? 7. And you can, if you want, you keep it consistent. Put plus, And then we'll just write k times your negative 2 over n. So you can see you're going to get a negative anyway because you're counting backwards. 7 minus 2k over n. That's your x of k. Here we go. Limit as n approaches infinity and then I'm gonna write sigma notation and then k equals 1 to n and I'm gonna write what am I gonna write giant parenthesis 3 parenthesis again perfect close it plus 1 close the giant parenthesis all that times what perfect Gonzalez, is it getting easier? Okay. All right, you're going to lead me on the next one. Ready? <laughs> and it's okay, miss. So I'm going to write delta x. Tell me what to write. Perfect. Yes. All right. Good job, miss. And then X of K, tell me what to write whenever you're ready. One? Oh, I thought you said one. What did I put next? Plus? I start at one. 1 plus k, the delta x, which is what? 2 over n. 1. Bless you. Bless you squared. Perfect. Limit. Yep. Giant parenthesis. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yep, all that. Yep. How do we feel? All right, there's two things today that we need to get done. One, you'll get it done in five minutes. Well, that's the plan. Um, no. <laughs> no, why is it going to be five minutes? Because I listen to you guys and look, matching activity. You guys, 